hey what's going on uh has been a while since i did my last update and i want to do one today specially because today is my 40th birthday and since i haven't been keeping up with this so i do apologize because uh, i have been busy trying to live a long more life now and i would like to provide an update at this time uh, so since my last treatment, I mean not last, remember, since my last update in May, uh, nothing too much has changed. Uh, my sweet, uh, taste of sweet is still not there completely. And I'm only able to taste a little bit of what I eat, which I'm not missing that much anyways. So no ice cream, no pies, no dessert of any kind, uh, certain vegetables, and most if not all fruits. I have been eating more fish and chicken, mostly chicken wings when I do eat chicken. Uh, just the wing part where you call it like flappers or flats. Um, I find that's the most easiest thing to eat. The drum part is very tough to eat and swallow. But it's okay because I always drink a lot of water daily. Uh, at least 100 ounces a day. Uh, almost 3 liters a day for the people with the metric system. Uh, now I eat mostly chicken and fish because one of my doctors... Uh, told me to stay away from red meat and fish. So anything like steak, pork, duck, lamb, you name it. Anything that's red meat, I got to stay away. Because during the last few months up to ju July, I had been averaging about uh, one gout attack a month. Now, due to probably the eating the red meat and shellfish, it's mostly just my diet. And I had a caffeine, one of those five-hour energy drinks, and it dehydrated me, which caused an attack. And that was a really bad one. So I've been seeing a doctor for that. And besides staying away from sugar, I also haven't been drinking any caffeines at all, whether it's coffee, tea, anything that has a hint of caffeine. Quite a few times that I noticed when I drank any caffeine, even just a little bit, my heart was pacing so fast that I thought it was going to jump out of my chest. Uh, which I did ask the chemo doctor about, and he said that it was because I've been away from it for so long that my body's not used to it. Uh, so I'm just going to stay away. It's just easier to do that than maintaining, like, hey, how much little bit of caffeine should I or should I not have? Also, I'm not a big cop eater still, so no bread, noodle, or rice. It's really rare that I eat any of those things that involves carbs. Uh, the worst things that I put in my body is just, like, fried foods. Especially fried chicken and fried fish. Uh, since I don't have any enhancements such as like caffeine, sugar, or anything, sugar from carbs, I get tired from, uh, well, about the appropriate time at night, like towards bedtime, uh, which quite a few people ask me, how do you function during the day? Well, I function by going to the gym consistently about three to four times a week. I'm still keeping that going on in my life right now so I can build up strength and I could stay up like a normal Normally, without caffeine or sugar, I haven't missed more than two days in a row of not going to the gym. So if there's not a gym around that I can get to, I make sure that I walk quite a bit or quite an amount to keep my energy levels up. Uh, one of the main things I haven't been keeping up with my updates, which I apologize, are uh, that the fact I have been um, getting back to video production with some of my friends. Now, video production is something that I love, as you can see uh, my background here. Uh, I've been testing a few things out. And which I'm hoping with my, my friends that I'm working and making and producing videos for his company, which I'm hoping to share in the near future. Um, I still get people oh asking me about um, cancer, and I would like to refer to some of the Facebook uh, uh, Facebook group that I follow. Um, and with those, I was able to locate like at least two other people that is uh, survivors as well that are close to my area, which we share some mutual friends, which was really surprising. I found that out just like a month or two ago. So while I would like to let others know that come up to me via Facebook Messenger or to another an acquaintance that I'll always be here for you. You just message me to via Facebook uh, and... And I'll respond definitely. So let me show you one of these Facebook groups. The uh, one of the first ones I do is this uh, nasal pharyngeal cancer survivor group. It's a public group, and uh, a lot of people post, hey, a, a motivation, anything with uh, questions. Hey, anybody experienced this? And there's a whole bunch of people that would like to respond because they want to let you know that you're not the only one. You will never be the only one. A lot of people share the same symptoms or um, side effects that you would. If you are to go to this cancer, probably just any cancer in general, that's how the chemo and radiation treatment 
give you the side effects and such, and if you have questions about uh, any questions about it. And the other group I follow is the nasopharyngeal cancer life after treatment group. This is a closed group, so you would actually have to be a member. You would actually have to be a survivor. But this first one I showed you is just a public one. So you have going to treatment right now. I suggest that you follow this group. Uh, I'm on there. A lot of a lot of helpful people are on there. So I highly recommend it. Uh, this group currently have like over a thousand members. 1245 uh, currently to be in fact. And this one is not as much. I guess because the uh, public group is easy, more, more easily to get invited to or join. So I highly recommend that. And now I'm, I'm already scheduled another uh, CT scan in November. Around the mid-November. So it's really hard to believe that it's already been past a year since my last treatment. I want to say for those that are fighting this good fight, keep on it. If I can fight this cancer and beat this cancer, and you can too. And I'll uh, try to update you on the next time. Bye-bye.